I needed to take a moment to recognize a very, very special viewer that's been with me from the very beginning. I definitely should have mentioned him in my 2 million view video, but I love you so much. And you and everyone else, you guys mean the world to me. And that's Frankis Lee. And that has been one that's been with me since nearly the birth of my channel and stayed with me throughout thick and thin. So thank you so much for always being here, always supporting me, and always showing me love. I really appreciate it. Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you from my private Serpentarium to bring you a special viewer request from somebody who is always there commenting and watching, Chilly Willy. He or she, I'm not really sure, um, I don't know, let me know Chilly Willy. That viewer would like to see the top five North American tarantulas in my collection. So today I'm doing my top five favorite North American teas. I have a couple little critters to show you and I hope you guys like them. Let me know in the comments below which animal is your number one favorite North American tarantula. Okay, let's get started. Number five is this adorable Aphinapel megaboli and they do get bigger than this. They are a medium sized animal. Obviously they reside in the desert. They live in the Sonoran Chihuahuan Desert. Their range is from Southwest America down into Mexico. Obviously they like a fairly dry, arid climate. And they were actually technically undescribed in this area until more recently. They were initially described by Pocock, but very vaguely in 1901. And then in 1995 was renamed Aphinapelma gabeli. Although until more recently, I just knew them as an undescribed species of Aphinapelma. This tarantula in general is fairly docile. I have heard accounts that their venom is pretty potent. I don't know anyone personally who's ever been bitten by one, and I've always thought that their venom was fairly mild, although I haven't been bitten, so I don't know that I can say that. And I've not actually read any research on their venom studies and the potency. But I think it's really cute, adorable. This is one of the first tarantulas that I saw in the wild, and so I just really enjoy it. I get to see these around the area that I live, and I think that they're super cute. Aphinapel megaboli. Number four, Brachypelma amelia. Obviously, this animal is related to the Mexican red knee or the Brachypelma smithi. This one is called the Mexican red leg. This animal is native to Mexico and lives in a savanna scrubland region. They prefer temperatures of around mid 70s to mid 80s with a pretty high humidity. They stay in their burrows when they are too dry and this animal is painfully slow growing. I've had animals that grow their entire lifespan before one of these will even reach maturity and the females can actually live for 25 or even 30 years. This species is really incredibly beautiful. I love the contrast, I love the color. I just think they're really awesome. And I love Brachypelma smithi so well that when I discovered Brachypelma Emilia, her cousin, I just immediately thought that it was a beautiful, fantastic species. They resemble the smithi, but on the other hand, they're very different. And so I think that they're really incredible, really beautiful, fairly easy to keep, not as easy as Smith Eye, but definitely easier in my region than keeping some of the tropical species. So it looks like she's ready to go on back to bed now. So I'm gonna put her back in her enclosure. Number three, Brachypelma vegans. Another beautiful Brachypelma. This one is known as maybe the Mexican Red Rump. You guys know that common names are definitely not my specialty. And you can tell this one is a mature male because of how leggy he is. 
And if he'll turn around, which he's not really wanting to, if you see him from the front, here on the front of his pedipalps, he has these little boxing glove shaped pedipalpal bulbs, which are only visible on a mature male. Speaking of mature males, this male was purchased by a tarantula aficionado that I know in my area, Mr. J Spider. And he had a big, beautiful female. So he purchased this male because he'd been growing up this female for forever and a day. And the, he brought them over and we were going to introduce them to each other. And when he took his two animals out to uh, drive them over to our place, he noticed that the female wasn't looking too good. And so we didn't breed them that night and she actually just kind of went into a death curl. We don't really know what happened to her. Uh, he's an excellent keeper. He's had no problems in his collection. It's not like he's having die off or he doesn't know what he's doing. His female, once in a while, you just kind of have a mysterious death and it's unfortunate, but sometimes animals will just have some type of medical problem that's really unidentifiable. So, long story short, if anybody has a female that they might want to breed with J Spider's Vegans, you can comment or contact me on social media or email me at deadlytarantulagirl at yahoo.com and we can try and hook these two up. This beautiful animal is native to Mexico. Their range can go down into Belize, El Salvador, and Guatemala, where they live in the ground in burrows. Obviously, this animal has some very distinct markings, jet black legs, the red abdomen, some very fine striping on the cephalothorax. They're just really, really beautiful. I love how thick and full-bodied the females get. These animals like being kept fairly warm with uh, about a maybe a 75% humidity. A lot of people use peat moss in their substrate. Interestingly, a reptile person recently asked me if tarantulas have different color morphs and this animal has such a wide range that in some areas their legs will be jet black with their abdomens being fire truck red and in other areas they are all just kind of almost brown all over and so depending on the locale that can really determine the color of your vegans that's really neat i think that's interesting because in reptiles you can get a lot of color variation depending on where the animal came from and that's not often true in tarantulas but in this one it pretty much is that's pretty neat this animal does typically like a deeper substrate. Some people even use peat moss and cocoa fiber and things like that. I tend to stick primarily to vermiculite and mine are usually happy, although I do give them more substrate than some of my terrestrial species. So this was number three, Brachypelma vegans. Number two, Brachypelma smithi. Of course, I cannot have a top five North American without mentioning one of the most famous iconic tarantulas in the hobby, the Brachypelma smithi, also known as the Mexican red knee. This one gets fairly large, very beautiful, very well known. As I've mentioned repeatedly, this was the tarantula used in the Indiana Jones cave scene where he's covered in tarantulas and that just like really got my blood boiling and I was like, that's so awesome. Obviously, they're native to Mexico. They like warmer temperatures, mid to low 70s to mid 80s, fairly high humidity, maybe 65 to 70%. Obviously, they are terrestrial. Some people like to keep them on a pretty deep substrate. They do like to web up and kind of burrow a little bit. This species grows at a slow to medium rate and they have a fairly long lifespan. I actually had a tarantula, a smith eye, for about 15 years. She was really big and beautiful and she was so awesome and she was my pet. And one day a cat knocked her off the shelf because that one I had in my house so I could see her every day. Yeah, she obviously, she didn't pull through. That was a really sad day in my house. This animal can be grown up more quickly if they are power fed. Back in the day, I was able to grow one of these up in just about two years. 
but that's when I was paying attention to every single animal every day and feeding it every day if I wanted to because, you know, that was back when I was just kind of a little part-timer and just had a couple of little teas. This is a fairly docile species. Many people consider them a good beginner tarantula because of their gentle nature and because of how hardy they are and that they are really a beautiful display animal. This is one of my favorites, Brachypelma smithi, number two. Number one is Carabina versicolor, formerly known as Avicularia versicolor. Common name is the Martinique pink toe or the Antilles pink toe tarantula, a lot of people call it. And this animal originates from the Martinique Island, which is in the Caribbean. Obviously, I love this animal for its amazing coloration. One of my favorite things about this species is how beautiful and incredible they are as babies. Uh, as you guys know, they are that electric blue when they are young little spiderlings after about maybe mm, like the third molt, they start to color up really, really quickly. And then they remain blue for quite a while. And then as they enter a juvenile stage, they very slowly turn from that brilliant blue to a really fuzzy pink, purple, and green. Hopefully my full spectrum lights are doing this animal justice. But this juvenile is in the middle of that transition in between the pink, purple, and green. So not the absolute prettiest phase, but this was one baby that I reproduced. This little one has a soft spot in my heart. As I have mentioned before, their natural habitat is being deforested to make room for shops and restaurants and diamond stores and clothing shops and areas for people to waste their money. And I understand that it's a very important part of the economy in the Caribbean, the whole tourist market. We only have one earth and so, I mean really, I think we should love it and respect it. This is number one, my all-time favorite North American tarantula, currently in my collection, Carabina versicolor. An honorable mention is the Aphinopelma moderatum. I just think this species is really adorable. They are native to the um, Texas area, and this is one of the species that I have found in the wild. I think they are really cute. They kind of resemble the fawn coloration of an English Mastiff or a pug or a buckskin horse and uh, just kind of that real nice tawny brown and it kind of has a smoky gray or black tarsi. They're a fairly docile species, less potent venom. Yeah, I just think they're really, they're really cute and I like them a whole lot. And it is the rarest North American tarantula that I currently have, so that makes it cool in my opinion. But anyway, that's my honorable mention, kind of my little cheating number six. Aphinopelma moderatum. I'd like to know what you guys thought about my top five North American favorite teas. Let's go over it again. Number five, Aphinopelma gabelli. That is the first tarantula I ever saw in real life. So that one holds a special place in my heart. And I do think that they're docile and, you know, cute. Number four, Brachypelma amelia, the big beautiful furry puppy dog of tarantulas. I love their colors, they're so soft and beautiful. And um, I mean, gosh, they're just really gorgeous. You can't pass them up. Number three, Brachypelma vegans. <sighs> the first time I ever saw a large vegans, I was just awestruck by their size, their beauty, and their burgundy abdomen. I mean, so beautiful. I do love vegans. Number two, Rocky Palma Smith Eye. You gotta give love to the Smith Eye. The first movie I ever saw with tarantulas was the Indiana Jones movie where all the Smith Eye are crawling all over him in the cave and he's totally wigging out. And I'm like, wow, that is so awesome. I'd love to go there someday. And that's kind of how my obsession started. Number one, Carabina versicolor, previously known as Avicularia versicolor. I love beautiful 
jewel tone things and I also love the Caribbean and the Martinique Island and I also have a soft spot for this animal because I know their habitat is being decimated for tourists to come on cruise ships and that kind of breaks my heart so I really feel that it's important to perpetuate the species and educate people about them appreciate them and show them all the love and last but not least the honorable mention the beautiful Afinipelma moderatum Possibly not the most colorful, but uh, one that I love a whole lot. It is the rarest North American tea in my collection and one that I've actually found in the wild. So that also makes it special to me. And I just think they're really beautiful and gorgeous. So there you have my top five, but I kind of snuck a sixth one in there. North American teas. Uh, thank you, Chili Willy, and to everybody else. I know you guys like these top fives. Chilly Willy, I want to know if you're a boy or a girl. And I want to know everybody else what your favorite North American tea is. Till next time, see you later.